Hi, and welcome to this YugoCon session about how you can manage your Yugo website with external content and assets. First of all, who am I? I'm Elio Streif, I'm from Belgium, and I'm the creator and maintainer of Frontlander CMS. I'm a Microsoft MVP, a Google developer expert, and a GitHub star. If you want to contact me, my contact details are on this slide. And with that said, let's dive into the actual content. So the idea I had started a long time ago where I wanted to reuse the content that I actually had from my website in other static site generators and frameworks. But I also played with the idea to share my content with others so that they can do contributions to it. Like if there's a typo on a page that they can just create a pull request and make me aware that this needed to be fixed. So what did I actually came up with is to move my content and assets out of my Yugo website over to another repository so that I can use this new repository as a submodule within my main website. That way others can do contributions to it and I can reuse it easily in any other static site generator. So let's take a look at the website, how it was before and how it can be configured to use the submodules. Over here, what you can see is front matter CMS with the content dashboard and all my website content uh, being loaded. Now I can click on an article and then I can actually look at it. I can see the front matter, but I can also manage the front matter straight within the front matter panel. How it looks like on the folder or explorer view is that all the content is where it should be in the contents folder and all my static assets are in the static folder. What I've already done is I moved away the content over to another repository, which you can find online. And it's available on my repository blog content. There you can see content with the same folders and the static folder and a couple of other folders. These other folders like database templates and so on, they are specific to front matter CMS. So I need them in order for my CMS to be working. So if I want to use this repository, then I need to remove the content and the assets from this current site project and integrate it with the submodules. Before we can use the git submodule commands, we have to do a couple of things. We have to remove these folders. So let's remove the front matter folder, the content folder and the static folder because we don't need these ones because they are coming from our submodule. So let's move them to the trash and there we go. Now front matter will say, hey, something is wrong because there's a configuration that is uh, incorrectly. And we know that because we just removed the folders. Now, the next thing is to open our terminal and then add the submodule. So in order to do this, we are going to use the git submodule uh, command with add. And then we are going to say, hey, add me the main branch of my Astraf blog content repository and add it to a front matter folder. So when I press enter, it starts cloning. It will take a while because it's a lot of content and assets. So I will speed up the process and come back when it's finished. So now that it's finished, we have a git modules file. And this file defines where the git module is coming from. So there's a submodule dot front matter. It's coming from this repository. It's the main branch that we are interested in. And we have a dot front matter folder, a new one. And there we can see the actual content. Now there's another interesting thing. Whenever you want to do updates to your submodule, I want to make sure that it always merges the content. In order to do this, you can use the git config command to specify that your git module submodule uh, is going to use the merge strategy. You can also see that the command just added the git modules file where the update strategy is now set to merge. So whenever we are going to pull our changes from our repository into the current project, they will automatically be merged. So let's now see what this new change to our repository is looking like. So let's spin up the server and let's open it in our browser. And there we see an empty site. 
And the reason for this is because there's only nine pages and 42 static uh, files. And why is that? Uh, the reason is that we haven't mapped the new content folder and the new static folder, which are living into the front matter uh, folder. So there we see static and content. We have to let Hugo know where it can actually find them. And in order to do so, Hugo has a setting for this, which is the module mount setting. And there you can specify where the source of the content and the static content lives. And you can also do that for data files, uh, assets, and so on. So for us, or for me in my case, for my websites, I'm going to use the content and the static folder. So let's go over back to our configuration. Let's stop this. And we are going to the Hugo configuration file and I'm going to add module mounts and then the source folder uh, to the content folder. And I'm going to specify that it's a target content. So that's where Hugo can find my content. And for my static assets, Hugo can find it in dot front matter slash static. When I do this and I'm going to launch the server action again, it will take a little bit longer because there's much more content. And if I'm going to refresh this, you'll see that there's much more data coming back. So I can actually see my pages again. So going back to our editor, there's a couple of things I still want to do. Right now, the dashboard of front matter is not going to work anymore because it needs to reinitialize. And the reason for this is because the configuration is still outdated. So what I'm going to do is override this and going to tell that a new configuration file can be found in the dot front matter folder. And there I already updated the content paths to the right ones. So if this is done and we are going to refresh the dashboard, you will see that the content is being updated. The final thing that I added was a way for my readers to actually contribute to the content. So what I did is in my single file, there's a partial GitHub, and this is going to show me a content block saying, hey, this is where you can find the file and where you can do updates. So on the site, you can see a, a report issues or make changes to GitHub. If you click on this link, it will bring you to the actual markdown file on GitHub for you to make changes to it. So that was it. Thank you very much for listening into my session and have a great time at YugoConf. Bye-bye.